Hi everyone, I just wanted to tell you what an amazing time we've been having our prayer meetings at church. We have been praying for people to get better, for people's circumstances to change, and we've been having a wonderful time. So, if you'd like to join us, we pray every day, three times a day, for 15 minutes. And the link is on our website. Hope to see you soon. Bye! The kids work. We're going to be reading from Acts 5, verses 12 to 42. So, I hope you enjoy it. So let's roll the video. I'm Philippa. At CCB we love to get together on a Sunday morning for a brew and a catch up um, just before or after the service but during lockdown we haven't been deterred at all. We meet every Friday morning at 11 o'clock for a cup of coffee or tea, a chat, lots of laughter and um, anybody's welcome to join us. Just follow us on the Zoom link which is found on our website. All you have to do is bring your own drink. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, I do hope these words bless your heart richly. I do hope you will put these words into practice. Do what they say and live them out. Uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. in heaven. Please be with Christians in Eritrea who are in prison and have been there a long time. Help them to know your love and comfort. Please help Christians in Eritrea to work together and keep those in secret churches safe. Amen. Amen. work we're going to be reading from Acts 5 verses 12 to 42 so I hope you enjoy it so let's roll the video hi there my name's Lynn and I just want to tell you about this fantastic testimony meeting that we have on zoom 
every Thursday afternoon at one o'clock for about an hour or so. Um, it's a time when two people, usually from our church, um, tell us their story about how they came to know Jesus and actually how Jesus has changed their lives. I've learned so many things about people in my church at Community Church Blackburn that I never knew before. I've laughed with them and I've cried with them and each story has been completely different and unique and amazing. So I really recommend you join us on Zoom on a Thursday afternoon at one o'clock. You can find the link on the Community Church Blackburn Facebook page. Hope to see you there. Bye. Hello, and this is my attempt at Norwegian. I'll be saying, I'm Ayana, I'm 14, and I like singing. Jeg er ene. Jeg er 14 og liker å synge. Ok, jeg er døde med Russian. Men jeg har vært til å begynne å gjøre det på sport. Yes, so this song I'm about to sing now basically means that um, God had created heaven and the earth. And the earth cannot contain him, he made heaven the same. And the heaven um, cannot contain him, the heaven that he created cannot contain him, and he made heaven, the earth, his food too. Yes, that is basically what the song is all about. Yes, so, you, you will enjoy it, yes. My name's Gwyneth. Before the lockdown, I only used to use text and WhatsApp by typing. Since the lockdown, I've been able to use Zoom. This is because Steve, our leader, sends an easy WhatsApp text to me and I press a bar what says Zoom and then I'm able to use it. Um, I've been able to contact all my friends through it and we have prayer meetings three times a day. It's nice to wave to everybody like this. I also encourage you, if you use Zoom, to get something to put your iPad or phone on so that you're comfortable in a nice comfy chair and that you're near your box so that you can get a good reception. Um, if you're worried about it, Steve will help you through it. It's no problem and I really enjoy it. Thank you. Bye, Gwyneth. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Community Church Blackburn this uh, Sunday morning. Um, we'd like to start off the worship this morning with a psalm. Um, it was brought at one of our prayer meetings yesterday by Mr. P. Um, so we just want to read this psalm to you, um, and it's Psalm 103. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagles. Um, and we just felt that this morning that was such an encouragement to us all um, in these these difficult and peculiar times. Um, so I'll pass over to Mr. B. Give him the umbrella. Give him the umbrella. Oh, 
load all my stuff. Crispian throughout the world. Today I would like to pray for Somalia. Please protect all the people, especially the persecuted Christians. In Jesus' name, Amen. Sudan, this is the flag. So let's just pray for them. Dear Lord. Thank you, Reuben. That was fantastic reading. So, did you spot who told a lie? So, what can we learn from this story? Let's find out. I hope you enjoyed that little video. Um, so we've just heard about the lame man who is healed at the temple. And he goes jumping and leaping and praising God because he's so grateful that he has been healed. And what's amazing about this story is that Jesus isn't there anymore. It's not Jesus who's healing people, but it's Peter and John through the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, they're able to see this man healed. The Holy Spirit gives us power to do amazing things. And from that, they're able to tell Nice. Have another bite. Come on, get it down you. Get it down you big lad. Come on mate. Come on. <laughs> My name is Heather, um, I go to Watney Community Church and I am a Christian. Now if somebody were to say to me, even two years ago, that one day you will be a Christian, you'll be actually feel okay about saying that you're a Christian um, and happy to defend why, I would have laughed in the face because it worked for me, I'm so far away from believing in God or believing that they were anything other than this and that life is very challenging. Hello there, my name is Daniel and I'm here to tell you about the Community Church Blackburn's big quiz of the year. It's at 6.30 on Friday and it's on the Zoom link, which will be hopefully somewhere beneath me right now. You will have 10 minutes to come up with a team name. You can play as a household or as an individual. And we aim to start at... Hi everyone, welcome to Devoted Online. 
You may be watching this anywhere around the world. In fact, we'd love to see where you're watching us. Maybe in your TV room, maybe it's on your mobile phone, maybe you're out in the countryside, somewhere in Africa. Who knows? We'd love to see where you're watching this. Why not put it on one of our social media platforms with the hashtag devoted online. We'd love to hear from you. We're so aware that this time in lockdown has created different experience for us all. For some of us, it's been an unexpected blessing and others have experienced difficulties. And we know that within our family of Christ Central, there have been some very sad losses of dear friends. But we know that God is in control. He's not surprised by this epidemic and he's ruling and reigning. And one of our responses is to lift our heads to worship him. I was recently reading Acts, 9, Acts 16 about Paul and Silas who were in prison. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. This is such a clear picture, demonstrating that as we worship him, I know that our chains will come loose and we are released. So let's welcome Lou, Nathan, Jesse and Ella Fellingham, who are now going to lead us in worship. Good morning, everybody. We are so excited to be with you. Well, almost with you. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but last year we like to use our bodies and our voices in worship to God. And over the last few months, some of us might have got a little bit lazy with how we're worshiping. We might be more comfortable sat on the sofa or uh, with a nice cup of coffee in our hands. But actually, this morning, what we want to do is we want to stand up strong. We want to celebrate what Jesus has done for us and is doing with us right now now. God is here. So I want you to stretch up as high as you can go. Yeah. See if you can touch your toes. Woo. I can do it. I'm cheating. And uh, give your grown-ups in the room a bit of a nudge. And if you can remember this, we've got a clap that we do to this song. Ready, Ella? One, two, three, and... Fantastic. This is the day of favour. This is the day of favor, good news is in the air, hope has arrived in Jesus, our rescue starts right here, oh, what kind of love searches the dark, trades all he's got to bring us home, what kind of grace runs to our aid, lays down sinking your love has turned us around set our feet on solid ground set our feet on solid ground your faithful love has turned us around set our feet on solid ground set our feet on solid ground 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 beauty instead Good job. 
God's love has turned our lives around. The love of God makes a difference yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we were singing about God of miracles and in bringing hearts to life. And that's what we know He's gonna be doing in our lives this morning, friends. He's gonna be bringing our hearts to life to Him. And I pray, God, for your miracles to come. Even this morning, I pray for the miracle of life, the miracle of salvation, the wonder of salvation, the miracle of your healing power, there is nothing that can stop or stand against the Lord. And it says in the Bible, if God is for us, who can be against us? Our God is for us. He never fails. He comes before us and lights the way. And every step He will lead us on. Our God is for us. Our God is for us. He fights our
having a little chat with God about some stuff that I was wrestling with. And just my mind was going crazy, my heart was going crazy. And I know that He's faithful. And so when you know the truth and yet your heart and your mind are kind of fighting against it, you can sometimes go, Lord, help me. And He reminded me of the the fact that actually when He took the Israelites into the wilderness, When they were in the wilderness, their shoes never ran out, their clothes never ran out, they always had food, they always had provision. And when that lady had no food and no resources, and then the oil started to flow in the jars, and it kept going, and it kept flowing, it kept filling, until there were no more jars left. And it wasn't until there were no more jars left that the oil stopped flowing. And it wasn't until they reached the promised land that God provided in a different way. I just want to encourage you this morning. It might be that you're thinking, Lord, I know you're faithful, but my heart and my head are tugging. But actually in the wilderness, in those moments of desperation, in those moments when we have no resources, he supernaturally gives us all that we need. Whether it's through other people, whether it's through friends and family, whether it's on the doorstep and we have no idea how it came, God never ever changes his faithfulness and those promises are ones that we can hold on to in Christ it's in Christ that we have the promise of peace it's in Christ that we have the promise of hope it's in Christ that we know that all his promises are yes and amen and this morning I just want to invite you maybe you need to open up your hands again maybe you need to be prepared to open up to God again to receive again from him that yes and amen over your life. Oh, yes and amen. Oh, yes and amen. Oh, yes and amen. Oh, yes and amen. So I will. My confidence is your faithfulness, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest, and I will rest, I will rest in your promises. My Romans 8 says this, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And it's this bit, He he who did not spare His own Son, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also with Him graciously give us all things? greatest love song, the greatest story, the King of heaven poured into a man. So helpless sinners can find forgiveness, born for our salvation, God's redemption plan. 
the curse of sin placed upon his shoulders all our offenses jesus chose to bear god's perfect judgment in love was rendered darkness was defeated death was shattered back to life you've raised us back to life now we're invited to sweet communion we are united in his righteousness participate Such precious mercy, this new beginning, no condemnation, now for me to fear, we're sin, we're sin in time. your feet. 
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Believe it this morning, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here. Touching it. We don't come to an order, but we come to a person. We come to the person of Jesus, who is the way maker and the miracle worker. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bring the words of Christ, that you bring Christ alive in our hearts. We thank you that you are the one who causes the seas to part, who causes the mountains to fall and the valleys to rise, that we may know you, that we may see you. And we pray, Holy Spirit, right now, come and move in every heart, in every home, in in the young, in the old, that we may know the truth of these words, that you are the way maker and the miracle worker. Amen. The Bible speaks about the Holy Spirit giving gifts to the church, gifts to help us worship Jesus, gifts of things like words of knowledge, tongues, interpretation, prophetic words, and we wanted so much for Devoted Online to encapture some of those things as well. And it's great that Anne now is going to bring a tongue. And uh, we've been praying and trusting God for an interpretation to that tongue as well. Thanks, Anne. Mm-hmm. 
gift of tongues is something that God gives us by his spirit to, to help us worship. It's that Godward thing that points us to Jesus and helps us express something of our love and, and heart for him. And we've got an interpretation of that tongue now that we've received it. You captured my heart, Lord. You captured my heart. I was wondering me I was lost you captured me I was blind you captured me I was captured to know you Lord my heart was captured to know you Lord to love you to be yours I'm captured by your faithfulness I'm captured by your love I'm held by your power I'm yours oh Lord I'm yours Lord I'm yours captured to be free free to know you free to love you Wonderful, wonderful. Isn't it so exciting that we had a, a tongue brought in a room here? Rog sent in an interpretation he was feeling uh, for that remotely, and then uh, Ali brought it so wonderfully by song there. God is on the move, and, and even today, no matter where you are, God is on the move. And just as you're watching this, this live stream program, we've had such a sense today that God wants to come to you right where you are. One of the, the words that we had through on the, uh, on the WhatsApp today was about a, a word of knowledge for healing, lymphoma. And if that's you, if you're suffering today, God wants to reach out to you. I want to encourage you to reach out to Him. And God, we want to pray today for healing in Jesus' name. And God, we're trusting you. I, I want to encourage you to reach out to Him. If you're looking to Him for, for healing today, God is on the move. Yeah. And Father, we pray that you would come by your Spirit and bring healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You've got another word there's there, a, I think, Ali? Yeah, there's a prophetic word here um, from Ginny in Sheffield to say that we can look at our limitations and not then actually be prepared to change or take risks. We're meant to be a people who are a blessing to the nations. And now is a time to look beyond what we consider possible or not, to recognize that our God is actively with us to help us break new ground. The place where we are living is too limiting for us as individuals and as churches. So it's looking beyond our limitations and to see that he says to us, the place you have been living at has been too limiting. Change is coming. He will move on our behalf as we reach out to those, to be those who strengthen the arms of others. And we will see breakthrough in communities, in the acceptance of the gospel, in the mending of lives, and in many other areas. Wonderful. 
That's so good. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who sent things through to, uh, to be part of this today. We so appreciated that. We, we couldn't read everything out, but thank you for all those that have been sent in. We also had a, a song that was sent in, didn't we? As well, a prophetic song from, from Sharon. Sharon, thank you so much for sending that in. We don't have the time, unfortunately, uh, to play the whole thing out. So we're we going to put that on our YouTube channel. So if you'd like to, uh, to see that, you can uh, have a look at that in the coming few days. But uh, she was talking about knowing in God's presence and in his presence there being joy and freedom um, but also not being distracted putting down distractions of busyness or screens or to-do lists and uh, there's a phrase in it about it being time to listen to the song of the father so God is so on the move isn't he has it been, yeah. been wonderful to read those they've come in isn't it yeah um, just fantastic and to see. And also Sharon mentioned about being brought into a spacious place, again, following up Wonderful. from Ginny's word. Similar kind of words. There. Fantastic, fantastic. So, um, so friends, thank you so much for, for being part of this and, uh, and worshipping as family together all around the world. It's wonderful, Amazing. isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to do that together. One of the things we've been able to do together recently uh, is to have a fantastic offering we've called our COVID-19 appeal. We've known that right around the world, uh, communities have really been suffering because of this pandemic. Uh, and many of you have given so generously. And I want to thank you for giving in to our COVID-19 appeal. Uh, well over £100,000 has been given now, and money is still coming in. Um, but we've been able to give the first chunk of money uh, to some of our churches in different parts of Africa. Uh, and the African team now have put together uh, a video for us showing already where some of the money has been sent, so, spent rather. So uh, let's watch that video now. <laughs>
everyone. Greetings from Kitwe, Zambia, Day Spring. We want to say a big thank you to our daughter for your generosity towards the giving of the COVID pack. And uh, thank you for those guys out there who've been able to give us masks and shields. We thank you because with the gift you gave to us, we have been able to buy food like a milli meal, sugar and, and beans and cooking oil, salt and buckets and soap, things that could at least help a household of five people to eat for a month. And so we say a big thank you also for those of you who've been giving towards our feeding programs. We have seen the numbers of children at our feeding programs double. We usually feed just about 180, but the, the, the children have gone up to 450 sometimes in one feeding. And so we are facing uh, uh, a lot of children who are hungry. The hunger situation in Zambia as a result of COVID-19 is threatening to become worse than it is at the moment because the essential foodstuffs, the prices have soared high as a result of the depreciation in our kwacha against the dollar. And so we want to say a big thank you to all our partners out there, uh, to Atotela, and you have been able to put a meal at a table of some of these families who would otherwise could have gone hungry. Thank you for putting a smile back on a child's face. My name is Michael Akotia, married to Mabel Akotia, and we have three children at Lee City of Grace Church and the team that leads the Christ Central Apostolic Base in West Africa. The COVID-19 pandemic has actually brought untold hardship to financially to a lot of pastors in the Christ Central churches in Africa. Mainly, the churches in Africa get their revenue from offerings and tithes that are paid to the church, from which pastors receive salary. But the closure of the churches as a result of the pandemic meant that offering and tithes were not coming. Not many people pay their offering and tithes uh, online or digitally. They bring the money in physically to the church. So the closure of the churches for about three months meant that there was no money coming in. So life became very critical for most of the pastors. And so the coming in of the COVID-19 uh, relief grant from Christ Central has helped a lot of the pastors to pay their medical bills, find food in, find food in the house, and then pay other expenses like rent, water bill, and light bill. One pastor actually called me and said, life has become so difficult for him financially. He was reaching suicidal levels. So the coming of the grant was very timely to save him from all these financial problems. I thank you very much for giving us the money. Many people don't focus on pastors, but the closure of the church, the church not having revenue, pastors not getting salary, make life very critical for the pastors. But the plan came in very timely to save us. Thank you very much. Je m'appelle Simplice Jacques de l'Église Communauté des Élus de Dieu. Je suis marié à Marie Madeleine Apia et nous avons cinq enfants. Je suis à la tête de l'équipe de huit églises au Bénin, dont l'église Mission Évangélique Philadelphie du pasteur Daniel Gleler et chapelle évangélique du Roi Divin de, du pasteur Guy Degla. Voilà, nous avons reçu euh, le soutien de Christ Central dans le cadre de, 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 de la pandémie du coronavirus et nous en sommes très contents. Nous disons merci à Christ Central. Que Dieu bénisse Christ Central. Amen. Pour qu'il nous soutienne toujours. Amen. <laughs> merci. God bless Christ Central. <laughs> Amen. Ah, uh, kwa majina yangu naitwa mchungaji Frank Masuba wa kanisa la Assembly of Chosen Dar es Salaam. Ninapenda nichukue hatua hii uh, nafasi hii ya kumshukuru sana aposto Geren asanteni sana 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 tunakushukuru 
kwa upendo wenu mwema kwa upendo wenu uliogusa mioyo ya watu ambao hamwajui kwa macho Mungu awabariki sana Asante sana Amen Part of the COVID offering is going to go to empowering farmers, empowering our people with uh, sustainable long-term projects. Like you see here, this is one of our shops that is doing eggs and chickens and other products. And what we are doing uh, in Zambia is engaging the churches in income-generating projects. In Zambia, we started the Zambia 2050 initiative which aims to raise the next generation of business leaders. So your offering is going to encourage uh, the church members to be involved in small scale farming. As you see this, this has been produced by our Heartlands initiative which Christ Central is partnering with here in Zambia and across Zimbabwe and other African nations. We are partnering with them to have a micro fund that can fund business startups. So 20% of what has been given will be committed to make this happen as a way of sustaining families, churches, and also the nation at large. Children, this is a moment especially for you. We've got a children's slot in Devoted this year because children matter to God. In fact, Jesus himself said, let the children come. I want to introduce you to a little boy, a boy called Daniel. Now, Daniel knows all about the four most important things in the world. Number one, God loves me. Number two, I have sinned. Number three, Jesus died for me. And number four, I must decide to live for God. Daniel himself has decided to live for God. Children, do you know the four most important things? Have you decided to live for God? If you haven't, why don't you ask an adult that you're with and maybe they can tell you a little bit more about how to do that today. Now, even though Daniel loved God, he found it hard to tell his friends at school that he was a Christian. He also found that sometimes he got really angry when he really no knew that he shouldn't. What Daniel was experiencing was something that a man called Paul told us in the Bible. You see, Paul told us about a battle or a fight that's going on inside of us. One side of us really wants to do what God wants, but the other side wants to do things our way. This battle or fight is going on inside of us. Children, I wonder, have you read in the Bible that God wants you to obey your parents? But sometimes, if you're honest, you're feeling a bit tired or grumpy. You really don't want to do what they're asking you to do. That is the battle that I'm talking about. Daniel heard that there was a special gift given by God for him to help him with this battle. He read that this gift was for children too. Daniel knew that he needed help. So he asked his parents about this gift. And they told him in the Bible, in a book called John, that Jesus said that the Father was going to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. In fact, the Holy Spirit would help them, teach them and remind them about everything that Jesus had taught. You see, Jesus knew that he wasn't going to be on earth for very long. He knew that he was going to die and go to heaven. And he knew that all the followers of him needed help to live for him. 
And that's what the Holy Spirit does. So Daniel asked his parents, how do I get this Holy Spirit? And they told him that all he had to do was ask because the Father in heaven is very pleased to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. That's what it says in the Bible. So Daniel and his parents prayed one evening. Daniel's parents prayed for him that he would be filled by the Spirit. When you're filled by the Spirit for the first time, it's called baptism in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. So Daniel was baptised in the Spirit. The next day, Daniel could go to school and know that the Holy Spirit was with him. The Holy Spirit was there to help him, to teach him and to remind him as Jesus had said. That morning, Daniel noticed that there was a new boy in school. He really wanted to play with his friends, but he felt the Holy Spirit remind him that Jesus loves people. Jesus loves strangers. Jesus loves the lonely. So Daniel listened to the Holy Spirit and Daniel obeyed the Holy Spirit. He went over to the little boy and he said hello and he invited him to play with him. You see, Daniel had been helped by the Holy Spirit to live like Jesus. And you too can also be baptised in the Spirit if you've decided to follow Jesus. And you too can get that help. Jeremy's going to pray at the end for us. So if you want that help, you can pray too. But before I end, I want to tell you one more thing. Baptism in the Spirit only happens once because it's the first time the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. But when we've been baptised, we need to get filled and filled again, just like this picture of the tree. This tree is by a stream and it's always getting the water from the stream, which helps it to create, boom, boom, beautiful fruit. And when we're filled by the Spirit, we start to see changes in our lives. Those changes are called the fruits of the Spirit. And you can read all about that in the Bible. So just to recap, number one, do you know the four most important things? If you don't, talk to an adult today. Number two, have you decided to follow Jesus? Then you can be baptised in the Spirit and you can get that help that you need to follow Jesus. And number three, if you've already been baptised in the Spirit, you can be filled again. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget, at the end of today, Jeremy's going to be praying for you. Okay, we're going to move on now. We're going to move on to something else. Kaleidoscope, a group of uh, a people who are really passionate about creativity, have put together a video. Earlier on in the year, they felt really stirred about Devoted this year. And they felt that the theme for this year should be dancing in the rain. And there's a spoken word that you're going to see a clip of in a minute that is along that theme. But before you watch that, I want to read a little bit of a prophetic word that the team here got given yesterday. This was given by someone that's not, collect, not connected with Kaleidoscope at all. Someone who didn't really know about our theme. And it says this. Preparing for a prayer evening in June, my wife got the following picture. It was raining heavily, the rain coming straight down. Someone was standing holding an umbrella. The rain was refreshing like it is at the end of a hot summer's day. But the person under the umbrella remained dry. Praying about this, I got the following interpretation. We've experienced a time of drought, but God is going to pour his spirit on this land. This will rain, this will rain down on those who dance in the rain. New shoots will spring into life like a desert after the rain, and there will be an abundance of fruit and blessings. But some will retreat into their comfort zone, back to what they know and shelter. They will miss the downpour, and the ground beneath them will remain dry and barren. Over to the video. 
Because my glory and grace are forever accessible. A light that shines with joy inexpressible. I can see that you're exhausted and your zeal is somewhat warm. But there's a hope that is coming, like the breaking of dawn. When the sun will rise with healing in its wings, I'll remove every tear that currently stings. Disperse all the darkness that desperately clings. Conduct a concerto as the cosmos sings. It will be a sound unlike any you've heard, a song of delight with passion undeterred. When suddenly, all that's dark will be displaced, bringing only shade and definition in my tapestry of grace. You see, I'm the conductor, the author and designer, the artist, choreographer, and also the refiner. A huge thanks to the Kaleidoscope team for producing that fantastic video. Uh, it's unfortunate we didn't get the opportunity to watch all of it today. But if you'd like to see it, then you can head to uh, our YouTube channel, uh, which is devotedevent.org forward slash YouTube. That'll take you straight there. Uh, and you can watch the whole of the video uh, in its entirety. If you'd like to find out more about Kaleidoscope, uh, then if you head to the Christ Central website, go to christcentralchurches.org forward slash creativity. You'll find a little bit more there about Kaleidoscope. Uh, alternatively, if you're on Facebook, you can search the Facebook group, which is Kaleidoscope Christ Central. So that's uh, been uh, great to be able to watch some of that today. One of the things that we would do if we were gathered together in a field in Staffordshire uh, over this weekend is we'd take an opportunity to have a great offering for the, the work and ministry of Christ Central all around the world. And we felt we'd like to do that a little bit later on this year. So in October, we're asking our churches, wherever they are uh, around the world, to have a Christ Central Sunday, one of the first three Sundays in October. And uh, we're going to be providing a message that will be played out, whether it be uh, on an online platform or if we're meeting in, uh, in person by then. Uh, but also to ask churches and individuals to give into an offering to support the work and ministry of Christ Central around the world. So there'll be more details coming to a Christ Central Church near you in the autumn. But I wanted to let you know early on that that's what's happening uh, during October. We would like to take the opportunity today to promote the Jubilee Plus Conference. This is going to be online in November, on the 7th of November. Main speakers are going to be Martin Charlesworth and Rachel Gardner. And uh, if you'd like to get involved in that, if you have a look at the Jubilee Plus website, jubilee-plus.org, all the information that you need is on there. Martin's book, which is written together with Natalie Williams, the latest one is about to come out at the beginning of September. It's called A Call to Act. And uh, I want to encourage you to get hold of a copy uh, as soon as you're able to. And it'll be a fantastic book to read, encourage you. I know it's going to challenge you as well. So get it from your usual bookseller from the beginning of September. Whilst we haven't been able to gather physically together this year for Devoted, we are hoping and praying that next year we will be able to once again. So I want to encourage you to get the dates in your diary early for Devoted 2021. It's going to be from the 27th to 30th of August. And our guest speakers are including Mike Pilavarchi, Toppy Collioso, Natalie Williams uh, and Jeremy as well. Uh, Lou and Nathan and the band are going to be leading worship once again. So I want to encourage you to get those dates in your diary. You can book online even from today. You may have booked in for this year and held over your booking. That's fine. If you haven't booked in yet, go to the website, devotedevent.org, and you can book in for next year. We'd love to see you uh, on the Staffordshire showgrounds next August bank holiday. We trust. It really has been so good to have Devoted online this year. Uh, huge thanks to the team here who have made it possible. I'm not going to list everybody by name because I know I'll forget someone. Uh, but if you've been part of today or if you sent in a prophetic word, whether we read it or not, thank you so much for helping make Devoted online work today. Don't forget to share your photos of uh, where you've been watching it on social media using the, the hashtag Devoted Online. We come out to hear from uh, Jeremy today. Jeremy is married to Anne and uh, he leads the Christ Central Apostolic Team, which now serves over, 200, over 275 churches 
in more than 25 nations uh, all around the world. So we're thrilled that Jeremy's preaching today. I want to encourage you to open your hearts to be ready to receive what God's going to say. So Jeremy, over to you. Wow, what a strange year 2020 has turned out to be. None of us could have imagined the circumstances that we find ourselves in, but God's in it. And God's been speaking to us. And I just want to bring together some of the themes that he's been particularly speaking to us about. I don't know if you remember the dreadful death of George Floyd at the, a few months ago and his words that kind of echoed out with real pain and sorrow as he said, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I and several others actually felt this is a prophetic cry for the church right now. It's like we've been winded. It's like something's hit us so hard and it's like we're saying we can't breathe. But actually God wants to send the breath of his spirit. Wasn't it wonderful? Kids, particularly as Ali brought that amazing picture about Daniel being filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God brings the breath of God into our lives. And I think God wants to breathe afresh on you today, wherever you are right now, in your living room, in your home, maybe even outdoors. I want to prophesy, just like Ezekiel, when he saw those dry bones, those bones, those bones, those dry bones, and he was told to prophesy to the bones. He was told to speak to the wind and to the spirit and to say, come, fill these bones with breath. And the spirit came and filled the bones with breath. And I believe God wants to come by his spirit. That was what happened in the very beginning. You remember the very beginning of how all this started? God made Adam and Eve. And actually God, by the spirit, breathed on Adam and he became alive. He became alive. He, he was spiritually alive. And God wants today to breathe his breath on you so that actually we, as the church, can breathe again. We can take in great lungfuls of the Holy Spirit and be energised afresh, just like Daniel was with the Holy Spirit. Do you remember Jesus when he gathered his disciples together? I always thought it was rather strange when Jesus gathered his disciples together after his resurrection in John chapter 20, I think it is, and he kind of gathers them together and you think, Jesus, the resurrected Messiah, the Son of God, the one in whom all power and authority and glory rests, he's going to say something amazing. What he actually does is breathes all over his disciples. <sighs> I think that's a kind of strange thing, but it was a prophetic action, breathing the power of the Holy Spirit into their very lives. And of course, that happened just a few days later when they were in the original lockdown in the upper room, they were there, frightened, nervous. Jesus had left them by that stage. He'd gone back into heaven. They were there, terrified, but in obedience to him, and suddenly the breath of God came. Suddenly, it said, inside the building, there was this sound of like a, a mighty wind, and the fire of the Holy Spirit came and filled those disciples and sent them out on mission to the ends of the earth. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing in our midst. That's what the Spirit of God wants to do with us. That's what the Spirit of God is doing. Can you breathe? Breathe him in right now. Receive the Holy Spirit right now because God wants to send you out on his mission. The second word that has come during the season, and it's come many times, and interestingly enough, I didn't know exactly what Ali was going to speak on earlier. Ali said it again. And it's this. It's a picture of a fruitful tree planted by waters, planted by a river. It's a continual theme, actually, that comes out in the Bible. It comes out again and again and again. We get it in Psalm 1. We get it in Jeremiah 17. We get it actually in Ezekiel 47 with the river of God and we get it again in Revelation chapter 22. And God spoke to me actually at the beginning of this year in January time, January, February time. And he reminded me of a prophetic word that he'd spoken many years ago into my life. 
In fact, it was the first prophetic word I ever received as a 16-year-old boy. And then I preached on it about 10 years ago at our North Bible event. Some of you New Frontiers, Christ Central historians will remember the gathering in that field. And this was the word. It was about Joseph. And God's spoken a lot to us about Joseph during these times. And it was Jacob, Joseph's father, prophesying over Joseph at the end of Jacob's life. And this is what Jacob said about Joseph. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches go over the wall. And I felt God speak to me right in the early part of this year that there's going to be some walls, there's going to be some obstacles. I had no idea about COVID-19. I had no idea that it would be coronavirus. I, I wondered whether it would be some new persecution or some difficulties, but actually it has been this dreadful virus that's locked us in. It's been like walled us up, shut us down, pressed us in. But the prophetic word came that we're going to be like Joseph, that we are like a fruitful vine. In fact, Jesus, didn't he say this in John chapter 15? He said, I'm the true vine. I'm the real vine. I'm the one who's come to be fruitful. And he says this in John chapter 15. I am the vine. You guys, you're the branches. You didn't choose me but I have chosen you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, supernatural fruit. And I believe God, in his sovereignty, is going to give us fruit over the wall. You see, when a vine grows up, a vine needs some resistance. A vine needs something to grow up. If a vine runs along the ground. It might have a nice, happy little bit of growth. It might think, oh, it's wonderful. I'm free. I can, I, can, I can produce as much fruit as I like. But what happens when the fruit comes, two things can happen. It can either rot on the ground because of the, the dew or little animals come along and eat it all up. Thank you very much. I'll have that fruit. And the farmer loses all the crop. But if it pushes up against something, a trellis or a wall, then actually it can be protected. It, it has some resistance. It has to push harder. It grows. More effort goes into it and actually more fruit is produced and actually it can go over the wall. And I believe prophetically God wants to speak to all of our lives and all of our churches and say, yes, I know that you're in lockdown. Yes, I know that this COVID thing has been such a restriction to you. It's pushed you down. It's hemmed you in. But God says prophetically, you are going to have fruit over the wall. You're going to have fruit out of this lockdown, right into the communities. Jeremiah 17 says the same sort of thing. Jeremiah 17 verse 7, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He's going to be like a tree planted by water that sends out roots into the stream and it does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought. It never fails to bear fruit. Dear friends, this has been a year of drought. My friends in Africa and the Middle East and in the uh, Americas, particularly in Mexico, know what it is to have droughts, know what it is to have lack of water. This has been a year of drought for us. It's been a year of suffering and difficulty. But God promises this. Because we're connected to his life source, because we're connected to that stream of water that Ali was talking about, actually we're going to bear fruit and that fruit is not going to be restricted by these walls. In fact, these walls are actually there to help us bear more fruit in new territory, in new homes, in new communities, even in new nations. Wasn't that interesting, that prophetic word that came earlier? about us being a blessing to the nations. See, eventually, when we get a glimpse into Revelation, into the end of it all, we see this beautiful picture of the river of God and trees planted all the way along it. It says this in Revelation 22, right at the end of the book. We know the end of the story. The angel showed me the river of the water of life flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And on each side of the river stood the tree of life, 
bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. Dear friends, the fruit that God is producing in our life is for the healing of the nations. And we're going to bear fruit even at times when other people are not. Even in times of drought, these fruit, it comes 12 times every month, there's fruit. And God would say to you right now, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're listening to this, you might not feel, I'm bearing fruit. God says to you, this is your time of fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is coming to you because you're in Christ. And his life, his spirit is working in you to produce fruitfulness in your life. We referred to Joseph. This is just like Joseph. Joseph had fruitfulness every part of his life. Whether he was in Potiphar's household as a slave, it said the Lord was with Joseph and he had success. Or whether he was actually lied against and put in prison, it said Joseph had fruitfulness. He was a success. Or whether he was propelled into the palace. Wherever you are today, in the palace, in the prison, or just in Potiphar's household. God promises you fruitfulness. Which brings me to the last kind of prophetic word that God's been speaking to us during this season. And it's of this. How are we going to produce this fruitfulness? And who is this fruitfulness for? Well, it's not for us. It's for the world. These leaves are for the healing of the nations. And actually, God wants to speak to us See, I hear a lot of people talking. I talk to a lot of pastors, whether it's on Zoom, we're all Zoomed out at the moment, or whether it's on the phone, or now we're meeting up, perhaps in ones and twos. And people are asking, this is the big question, the question that somebody asks me almost every day. When are we going to get our church services back? Listen, guys, that's the wrong question. It's when are we going to get the church back to serving? You see, this winding... This body blow that's happened to us, it's kind of put us on pause. It's kind of like we're the animal, the rabbit, caught in the headlight. And it's like we're a little frozen, kind of waiting until this thing goes away. When this thing goes away, then we'll be really fruitful. No, it's in the trouble. It's in the difficulty. It's when you're hitting the wall. It's in the prison. It's in Potiphar's house that you're going to be fruitful. My friend Andy reminded me of a scripture. You know, when you read through the Bible, I read through the Bible. I try most years to read through the Bible, not every year. But I've read these passages time and time again. I've never seen something that my friend reminded me of. And it was this. The children of Israel, and Lou talked about the children of Israel in the desert. When the children of Israel in the desert, they followed the Spirit, and it took the form of a cloud, a a pillar of fire by night or a cloud by day. And when the cloud stopped, they stopped and they set up camp. And they kind of waited. Are we going to move on today or are we going to move on tomorrow? And what they were told was this. You can wait around for a day or so. You can wait around to see if the cloud moves on. You can kind of stop your duties, stop your serving for a day or two. But actually, if the cloud stays, start serving again. Get on with your duties. Listen, friends, we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know when there's going to be an end point to this. Let's not be frozen. Let's not be winded. Let's not be a rabbit caught in the headlight. Let's get on with our duties. Let's get on with serving the world. Let's get on and be fruitful in life. You see, every generation has a big battle. Previous generations had different battles. Some of them went to war for liberty. Some of them fought for justice. This is our generation's battle right now. What kind of a battle are you having? What kind of a war are you having? Are you frozen? Or actually, are you using this to get into new territories, to get into new neighbourhoods, to get into new homes, to make new friends? It's ever so important that we understand During times of difficulty, during war times, there's more creativity and ingenuity than at peacetime. See, in wartime, we need breakthroughs. In peacetime, we can just rest back. Listen, 
I am so impressed that during this COVID time, the spontaneity, the creativity that's being birthed around our churches, the new ways that we're finding to serve, the incredible ways of working into communities with food banks. We heard that amazing video of how our brothers and sisters in Africa are responding to this. But that's not just in Africa. I'm hearing that in the Middle East. I'm hearing that right across the United Kingdom, that actually during this period of time, during COVID, during lockdown, during a time when we're not supposed to be doing anything, the church is arising. And the church is arising to be a blessing to the nation. Ultimately, Joseph arose in a time of trouble. It was famine. You think, Famine is not a good thing. Of course, it's not a good thing. COVID is not a good thing. But during the time of famine, Joseph arose. And during this time, I believe the church is arising. You see, God has prophetically spoken to us about this. Our dear friend, Ginny Bergen, who's part of our team, based in our home church in Sheffield, she prophesied this a few years ago. I've got her permission to read this out. And this is a prophecy that she gave to quite a large gathering a few years ago. And it was this. An unheard of disaster is coming. A despicable thing that will shake us and shock us and is without thought for those who are vulnerable. Sound familiar? Churches, and this is what she saw in her vision, churches were having to support people in very difficult circumstances. The people in churches were responding and supporting their communities and they were being called the rescuers. So, the word went on, be prepared to support and reach out to those who've lost everything and those who have no way of knowing how they will even eat. The Joseph Barnes will soon be opened and you will be called the rescuers. Dear friend, this is our time. Dear friends, it's now. It's not for another time. It's now. We're to rise up and be the rescuers in this generation. It's happened before, friends. I think we need to study prophetic. We need to study church history. This has happened before. In the very early centuries, even as the church was trying to form around ancient documents, trying to bring the canon of Scripture together to understand what God said, and right in that time in Rome, there was incredible plagues. And I found this one in 250 to 270 AD, in those early centuries after Jesus, a terrible smallpox plague devastated the Roman Empire. It killed 5,000 people a day in Rome alone. The emperor, Decius, who had been persecuting Christians at first, decided that the Christians were to blame for this. But that was quelled by two uncomfortable facts. Number one, the Christians died from the plague just like everyone else. Number two, unlike everyone else, they went out of their way to care for their dying neighbours and friends, irrespective of their religious beliefs and background. A professor of early and New Testament Christianity in the Notre Dame University, Professor Moss said this about that time. An epidemic that seemed like the end of the world. Does that seem to you like what's going on? It's the end of the world. An epidemic that seemed like the end of the world actually promoted the spread of Christianity. By their actions, in the face of death, Christians showed their neighbours that Christianity is worth dying for. Dear friends, we're not to act in fear. Now, let me be very clear with you. The opposite of fear is not courage. The opposite of fear is not bravery. The opposite of fear is love. Perfect love casts out fear. The Apostle John contrasts those two things together. And God is showing us that we're to be known now by our fruitfulness. Jesus said, by this shall they know that you're my disciples if you have love, if you demonstrate kindness, love, mercy. That's the fruit of the Spirit. And that's what God wants of his church today. And that's what God wants to do in you. Now, I believe this as I was preparing this. I saw people's homes 
And I saw God giving people ingenious, creative, God-inspired dreams and wisdom from him to know how to reach out to your neighbours. I don't know what that's going to look like for you. I'm not going to prescribe it for you. God will lead you. Just as he led them through the desert, just as he has always led Christians down through the years, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into how your fruitfulness is going to be made known to your neighbours. But I honestly believe this, that this is going to be the time of mass evangelism by declaring and demonstrating kindness and mercy and love. This is what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2. He says this, live such good lives amongst the world that even if they accuse you of wrongdoing, oh, we don't like your sexual ethics, oh, we don't like your use of finance, we don't like the way you do things, you Christians, even though they accuse you of wrongdoing, they may see your good deeds and glorify God. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence ignorant talk. A lot of ignorant talk going on at the moment. And we're called to silence it. Why? How? By, by some prop? No, by acts of love by acts of mercy, by acts of kindness. And right now, God is speaking to you. Some kids, God's speaking to you about how to show acts of love, how to show acts of mercy. And right now, there's a softening going on. You might not see it, and this is particularly, I'm just going to speak to our nation at the moment, the United Kingdom, but this is happening all over the world. I'm just going to give you some illustrations. A newspaper I read last week, which is one of the most read newspapers in this country, had a report from a University of Durham. It wasn't a Christian report, but it said this, that over this COVID period, over 50% of young people aged 18 to 24 have found and watched online religious services. That's our young people. Isn't that amazing? That's the generation that we think is quite difficult. That's the generation we think that's a hard generation to reach. They're hungry. God's softening their hearts. I had an interview with Nicky Gumbel, the founder of the Alpha Course, and he said this, I would have never, I would have, this is how he speaks, I would have never considered putting Alpha online. Now, he said, because our numbers have doubled, during this COVID time, I'll never consider taking it offline. Dear friends, there's a hunger in people's hearts for God. There's a softening in their hearts. Now, as we finish this message, I just want to remind you, in case you've misheard what I've said, this is not just about some altruism or some kind of philanthropy, or it's just be good, be good, be good. What motivates us, dear friends, is not, just love for people. We do love people and we do want to show kindness to people. But what's going to motivate you? What's going to keep you going for the long run that this is going to be? It's not just love for people because sometimes that can dry up a little bit. It's actually love for Jesus. It's love for God. And as the love of God grips our heart, as Jesus becomes more wonderful and beautiful and incredible and and lovely and awesome and powerful to us, we start to love the things that Jesus loves. And do you know what? God so loved the world. And God's putting a love in our hearts for the world, motivated by the love in our hearts for Jesus. As Paul says, The love of Christ compels us, it moves us, it stirs us. A great hymn writer once wrote this, Isaac Watts, love, so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. Right now, I'm going to pray for you. As Ali said, we're going to pray for grown-ups and children. And as I do that, I'm going to welcome our friends, the Fellingham. So grateful for our partnership with Nathan Lou, and uh, great to have Jesse and Ella with us too. Just love this family, love all they're doing for Jesus. Love actually, Lou, what you're doing with your coffee mornings. And actually, God's going to use your coffee mornings more and more. You were telling me some of your plans, and I think that's exactly what we're talking about. 
getting people into homes together, the fruit of the Spirit, loving one another, not for that you have to preach a sermon, but demonstrate the love of God. That's the real preach. That's the, the, it, we need incarnate love. We need love worked out. And as these guys are just going to come and lead us again in one final song, I'm just going to pray. And I'm going to pray for the love of God. I'm going to pray that we get filled afresh with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray that we get repositioned from fear, from being in fear to being in love. That we change from being a victim to being a rescuer. And that we change from being stationary to being a server. So Lord Jesus, right now, I pray for my dear friends right the way across the world. I pray, Lord, send the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill young ones, fill older ones, fill mums and dads and young children. You said, Lord, on male and female, young and old, rich, poor, slave, free, you pour out your spirit. Now do it, Lord, right now, this moment as we're watching this together. Do it. Fill us with the spirit so that our fruitfulness might go over the wall, so that we might be freshly brought in love with Jesus, motivated by his love, change from being victims to being rescuers and move from being stationary, frozen, winded in the headlights to being servers going forward. We ask that in Jesus' name.
Thank you so much for joining us for Devoted Online. It's been great to have you with us. And we're hoping that many of you will be able to join us next summer for the Devoted event in the Staffordshire Showgrounds in the UK. If you'd like a taste of what that's going to be like, then here's a video to give you a flavour. But thank you for being with us. God bless you. love about Devoted is gathering uh, the church family together for an extended time of hanging out, uh, eating, drinking together, talking, getting to know people. and it's just brilliant to see them growing in God and also having so much fun with their friends and meeting new people. Yeah, I like the family worship because when you're with your friends, you can dance and it's actually about encountering Jesus and I just find it fun to be able to be there with my friends no matter how old they are. I really find the seminars engaging and full of wisdom. I love it, it's great. Basically, I've been helping out and praying for lots of different people. I like it because we see people uh, meet with Jesus. We always say when we're gathering for the devoted, we always say it's worth a hundred Sundays. I just love the community aspect, just to come as church family and to hang out together, just to get that time to really just chill out. Fun, 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 fun and great encounters with God. So, Devoted 2021. It's going to be an amazing weekend. I can't wait to be back worshipping God together with family and friends. It's going to be good to have guest speakers, Mike Pilavachi, Natalie Williams, and returning to Devoted, Toppy Colioso. But do you know what? It'll be nothing without you. Devoted 2021. We'll see you there.